Okay, well, thank you everybody for. Hello. 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 <laughs> we will do a quad uh, song here for you guys. Yeah. All right, thank you everybody for uh, stopping into this panel. This was uh, one that was a little bit of a last minute. We, we put it onto the panel listings, I think, a week and a half ago, so it didn't make it into the books, on, into the sway base that some of you got, but we did manage to get it onto the main schedule because it was one that I didn't realize I was actually gonna be here for about a week and a half ago, so it was last minute for me as well. And I said, hey, there doesn't seem to be one about coming out in the game industry. And I thought that might be important, interesting to some people here that are attending that maybe aren't out, whether it's personal or professional. So we want to talk to you about that a little bit today, tell you mainly a little bit about our experiences, uh, both on a personal level and a professional level. Some of us, you know, we've, we've uh, come out to friends and family, and we've also obviously come out to fellow co-workers as well. So let me introduce the panelists. Um, my name is Matthew Anderson. I'm community manager in the game industry for a little over 10 years now, and I currently work at Six Foot in Houston, Texas. Any Texas fans here? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, I'll tell you a story about that in a, in a minute. Uh, then I have uh, Thomas Abrams, head of recruiting at ArenaNet, and Regina Buena Obra also at ArenaNet, a community, fellow community team leader, and Chris Wright, who is currently in the industry exploring new opportunities. Uh, yeah, working on an indie title. Okay, I have his, I have his title wrong here, so we're trying to get him over at ArenaNet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, so again, the, you know, the title of the panel is coming out in the game industry, and uh, I wanted to really kind of plant a word here for you guys, and that's quality. It's, it's really what it's all about here, um, not just for our panel, but for, for everything at this uh, event. And I want to read the definition of equality that I Googled. And it says, the state of being equal, especially in status, rights, and most importantly, a part I added, most importantly, opportunities. So if there's anything at the end of this panel that you should take away, is that there's al always going to be opportunities. Um, if you're not out yet, you're especially looking to get in the game industry, hello, we are here, it works. It's, it's, it's not a big of a deal as you might suspect um, at first. So it's, I, I hope this is you know, a point that you can take away is that there's always opportunities. And you know, the way you come out is something that is gonna be unique and different for each of you. Uh, it's not, you know, there's not a book about it. Well, maybe there is, I don't know. <laughs> Um, so I'll just start really quickly with uh, my story of, of coming out. I grew up in Wisconsin. Anybody a Wisconsin fan? Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. There's one Texas fan and one Wisconsin fan. Well, on this topic, they're about equal in this regard, which is why we only have one of each. So I grew up in Wisconsin. Not a lot of game industry studios there. There's a couple, a few in Madison, but it's a relatively conservative state as well. So. I didn't get a lot of opportunities at an early age to explore myself, and I was a fan of, of games, obviously. In fact, that's pretty much all I did. In fact, I almost got dropped out of high school because of that, because I was playing games in the library when I shouldn't have. So it, it was a big important part of my growing up, is, is, is games, and identifying with others You know that, hey, you know these games are exciting and unique, and something that you know I want to maybe do professionally one day. So I went from there to finishing college, uh, went to China for a year teaching English as just something to do. I would highly recommend it. Whatever your career and profession is, is to go abroad and to explore a little bit about the world on the other side, to really understand well, what is it like over there? How do they view issues related to your profession? How do they really understand you as being an LGBT member? There are big differences over in Asia, in Europe, and it, it's different everywhere. And so exploring that, I think, helps to understand yourself and where you fit in. And then I went after that to San Francisco several times, starting to go to events like GDC to understand, well, okay, now I want to get serious about getting into the industry. How do I do that? I have three words for you on that. Networking, networking, networking. Okay, that's technically one. But it's very important to really get to know others in the industry, which is a good point about being here is that it helps to realize, 
give you perspective, to give you an understanding of, well, what can I do to be a community manager? What can I do to be any one profession that, uh, that I eventually want to be? Or if you're already in the industry, to understand a little bit better about what are your options moving forward. So moving to today, uh, I realize that the industry is more open than ever. There's more opportunities. And so I would like to hand this off to Thomas to uh, kind of move that along and to have him share a little bit about what his experiences have been. Sure, so um, I head up recruiting for ArenaNet, so I come across a lot of candidates. Um, and in my practice, I, I really try not to um, assume what people's personal lives are or um, if I know them or if I see, uh, I've seen them out and about, right? I never ever cross that line of, what do you do outside of work, right? That's uh, pretty big and, and diving into this, um, you know, for the workplace and gaming, um, it's funny because uh, you look at a lot of people that are straight and um, I don't remember a time to where I've actually introduced myself to someone and they said, hey, my name is Joe, I like women. How are you, right? So coming out uh, for me in the gaming industry or in, in my workplace is more of a personal thing in the sense of when I get to know people more within my workplace and they start conversing with me about, oh, so what do you like to do? And um, are you married or are you not married? That's the time that when I actually start diving into my personal life, right? Um, I don't walk around uh, saying, you know, hey, I'm gay, hey everyone, I'm gay, just so you know, I'm gay, and I'm a recruiter, right? That's, <laughs> I just did that now, but, <laughs> but you already knew that, because it's like, um, but it's, it's really interesting because um, I'm, I'm really fortunate that I work in a studio that that does not matter whatsoever. Um, you know, we just look for quali uh, quality candidates, right? Because it's work. At the end of the day, you're going to work, and um, are you doing a good job with your are you with work itself, right? Are you a great programmer? Are you a great artist? They're not worried about what you do on your own time. Now, I'm not saying that um, other studios are the same, or 100% of the people um, are on board uh, with being okay with people that are gay or. Um, or otherwise, right? I'm not saying that that's going to always be 100%, but what I'm saying is that from my experience is that um, I've had an okay experience and a good one with, with our studio and even in my career. But again, my I'm different, right? We're all individuals and we all have our own different um, coming out stories. And um, we also have our own gay friends that tell you how you should come out, right? And tell you, here are the rules of coming out, and why aren't you out to your parents, and why aren't you out to, and that alone, I have to say, frustrates me more than anything, because I don't think there are rules. I don't think there should be, and I think that we're all individuals, and I think that we come out on our own time and in our own ways, if that makes sense. So that goes to my personal thing, am I, am I like, cutting off to the five? Okay. Right. And so, my story on the personal level, outside of business, is um, I used to be married, so I had a little bit more complex. I was married with a kid on the way, and then I came out. So come talk to me after that. So um, it was pretty tough. I consider myself a late bloomer. Um, I didn't know, like growing up in my life, in high school and stuff like that, I knew I was drawn to um, some friends, but I just thought I would really wanted to be that friend. Not until later on in life I, I realized I really want to be more than that, right? And so I was a late bloomer and happily married. My marriage wasn't terrible. We had a kid coming on the way and it kind of you know, hit me later on in life. And I had to come out. There wasn't like I'm getting divorced because I hate my wife. I had to come out and say, hey, I'm getting divorced because I'm gay and here's the reason why. And I truly thought I'd lose quite a few friends through it, but it's who I was so or who I am. And so I came out and I really truly lost like one friend. And I, and I say this to everyone that if you're not out now or if you're on your own path, that um, I think that the people that stick by you are your true friends, right? They're not worried about what you are and 
what you do in your personal life. They like you for you as a person. So I'm very fortunate for my part of coming out. But even to this day, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, I don't, you know, I don't show a lot of public affection. I'm, you know, I still am weary about where I am and who's around me and stuff because it's not an easy world to live in being gay. But it's also not hard. But I'm just more aware of my surroundings. And when you talk about equality, and we talked about this um, beforehand, um, I think that's the true sense of equality is when, when are we going to have a time to where we're not even worried about that stuff, right? I think that's equality is when, when we walk out and we can hold hands with whoever the hell we want and, you know, kiss and hug and do the same things out in the public, no matter where you are at, and not be worried about getting beat up or, you know, looked at or, or anything, right? So. <laughs> so that's my story. Hi. Um, so, um, actually, touching on something you said um, about coming out and what you said about every experience being different, um, one of the things that I really believe is setting your own terms um, in terms of coming out. Like, you setting the boundaries, this is it's something that you know, you should feel, ideally, you would feel safe doing so. Do it in um, a setting that is comfortable to you, you know, for you, um, whatever. Um, and this is how I've chosen to come out to people um, in, in my life. Uh, I'm talking on a personal level, not a business level. Um, so, if I choose to do that, I would, you know, Sit the person down, or I might email someone. In the, in the example of my mother, I called her because I didn't feel like I didn't want to do it face to face because I don't, I didn't think I could do it face to face. In the end, she did hold it against me that I chose to do that over the phone because um, she uh, she she got she was hurt that that I thought that she might react poorly to it and. And I was thinking to myself, this is my story, right? You don't, you don't get to dictate to me, like, um, how I should go about this. So, um, I don't want to, like, tell you what to do, but um, just think about your own personal safety and comfort um, when doing that. Um, in terms of coming out in the workplace, um, Let's see, I, I've been in, in the industry for, for seven years, six years at Reading Net, um, and it, it usually never comes up. Like, it usually only comes up when people are talking about, oh, hey, what did you do this weekend? So and so will say, oh, and, hey, I you know, had a barbecue with my family and my wife. Um, and then at that point, you may choose to share um, details about your life. Um, that's how I've chosen to come out because I feel like it. It de-emphasizes, ooh, you know, you know, sexuality, and more, it, it normalizes a little bit more. Um, at ArenaNet, um, I'm lucky that the company has been like just really welcoming to everyone. So when I joined ArenaNet, I asked, um, "Hey, do you offer domestic partnership benefits?" And they're like, "Yes, here's the form." And that was like, "Cool, thanks. I'll sign the form." Um, and then, you know, um, there would be like work, you know, work family functions like the, the holiday party, summer picnic, blah, blah, blah. I would bring my partner there, um, who later became my wife. Um, so it, it was, it, it's normalized, I guess. Like, that, that's, I don't really have a, I don't really have a coming out story per se in, in, in terms of the workplace. Um, I am a community manager, so my job is really public. Is pumped for that one. Um, <laughs> so it's it's one thing to come out, like to to be out among your coworkers. Um, it's another thing to be out among the community that you manage and gamers. Um, with the public, I'm a little bit more guarded because I don't want them to focus on that aspect of me because they think they'll you know, oh, you'll have an agenda and stuff. Um, what happened when I joined ArenaNet, um, prior to being at ArenaNet, I was a, I was a blogger. Um, 
that was my, my side thing while I did administrative work. So I, I was very outspoken about feminism, LGBT issues, you know, anti-racist, intersectionality. Um, and I wrote for uh, a magazine called Cerise Magazine, which was part of the Iris Network, um, one of the early feminist gaming sites on the internet. Um, it's no longer there, but um, that's what it was. Um, I did an interview with um, the founder of LesbianGamers.com, and that was that was an old interview. And then when I joined ArenaNet two weeks after I joined. Um, some fans in the Guild Wars community, you know, found the interview and they're like, she's a lesbian. Like, she did an interview with a lesbian, so she must be a lesbian. And she's, she's a feminist, she must be a lesbian. So, like, so there was this whole thing swirling around and I, like, like, yeah, I was on Twitter and stuff, I was very outspoken about these issues, but at the same time, I don't, um, because I was aware that, you know, as a public person, like you don't, and your work is in public, I didn't necessarily want them to focus on that. So I never actually said, hey, you know, I'm queer or whatever. Um, and so that they left to this conclusion was very angering and puzzling. Um, yeah, so I mean, they speculated it for, about it for a while, and I went to my lead. Um, at the time, and I was like, hey, there's this stuff going on. Does this concern you? And it wasn't even like the entire Guild Wars community, it was like five people. Like, it was, it was like, they're like randomly stirring up shit on like the unofficial Guild Wars wiki, like on some talk page somewhere. And then some people were talking about it in game, but I, because, you know, I, somehow someone pointed it out to me, and he was like, so my lead was like, no, don't worry about it. Like, you don't, you can do whatever you want, but, you know, just, it's, we don't care, like, don't worry about it. Um, so I was like, all right, so he was like, you can write about it if you want, you don't, or you can not write about it, like, you can choose what you want to do, and we'll support you. So that was, you know, that was totally cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, like, one of the things that, that struck me about the, the reaction of those people is that, um, you know, they, not only did they make all these weird assumptions about me, um, that were not true, because I'm not a lesbian, um, is is that they also accused me of starting these conversations myself because I was so outspoken. They said she's making the game about her. I'm worried about my child. What if you know? What if she pushes her agenda on the game and I haven't? Like I mean, we do have a playable race in Guild Wars 2, the Silvari, who are canon bisexual or pansexual, but that was not me. That was like our awesome writing team and lore team. Like, they decided to do that because, you know, Arena, that's awesome. But, um, yeah, so it, yeah, so there, there's kind of like, I, I kind of balance, um, you know, being very comfortable in my workplace, like being comfortable around my coworkers. Um, I don't, I take my wife to functions and whatever at the company, but, um, on the internet, I'm a little bit more circumspect because of the safety issue. I don't want to. Um, I want. I don't want my community to focus on that aspect of my life. I want them to focus on my work. I want them to focus on our product. Um, and that's that's the choice I've made for my own mental health and safety. And um, yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm different, I'm not a community manager. Um, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, so I'm actually a programmer. Um, and, and I think I'll start off uh, with my personal history as well. Um, I actually grew up in South Carolina. I'm not even gonna ask because I'm not really a fan, sorry. Um, but I, I, I mean, I grew up in a small town where, you know, that was where the gay guy lived. Um, and realizing, wait, I might be one of those gay guys. Um, I had a lot of time to sort of keep it to myself, um, and so when I moved to Seattle, I was really excited because I could, you know, be open about who I was and I could talk about it at work. Um, I actually started out in, in the tech sector and not uh, just games, and um, so, you know, I have a coming out story from tech and from games, and tech was actually worse. Um, one of my first jobs in Seattle, I actually got harassed like sexually harassed on the job by a straight guy who was not okay with me being gay. 
And I actually was almost fired because I waited too long to tell my boss and he was worried that the company could get sued for it. Um, and it was such a surreal experience because you don't really, I mean, I, I assume most people when you tell people, you know, just casually, oh no, I, you know, I have a boyfriend, not a girlfriend or a wife, that, you know, at most they're going to say, oh, fine. And just sort of drop it. So it, when, when something like that happens, it's very strange. Um, I would say definitely don't make the mistake I do. If it does happen, I mean, obviously, like everyone else has been focusing on a lot of the positives, and I think by and large, most of the experiences are positive, but when they are negative, do something, say something. Like, I think it's probably unrealistic. It's just going to work itself out. Um, and you know, it, it was about, it was only about a month period where it went on before I finally told my boss and the guy was gone the next day, instantly. I mean, he apparently had a, a history of just sort of targeting, you know, pick a minority and he would be offensive, but he had been there long enough that it was sort of, well, we can't really get rid of him, um, but they can. Um, sorry to sort of bring the mood down. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's important to just realize, you know, you should be happy and proud about who you are. And if somebody has a problem with that in your personal life, it's, you know, on the internet, sure, there's lots of people that have yelled at me and insulted me, and it's fine. It's easy to block you or just delete those emails. But I mean, in a professional place, your company should, at the very least, make sure everyone is treated well, equally. I think it's getting also to the point, and I, as a community manager, I see this in the community for our games too. Just what you said is, it, there are, you have to sometimes to, you know, say and speak up about, you know, potential harassment problem. But keep in mind, a couple of things here. There's maybe only one person doing it. It sounds, or it feels, I should say, like it's the entire world on your shoulders right now because that one person. But you have potentially support from your the rest of your company, the rest of your teammates. And in, like in the community for, for games, I've seen it where there's that one guy in the forums who's causing problems, you know, that troll as we like to call him. And half the time, I'll, I'll see other community players jump on that troll and say, hey, could you quit it? I don't have to say a thing. They take care of it, and they do it in a good, responsible way. And I think for our industry, we're, we're starting to get to that point where, yes, there's that one or two people who, you know, are loud, but you have your other friends and your other coworkers that will speak up and, and uh, support you. Did you do you have anything else? Anyone? Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's okay. Um, I, I mean, honestly, game, gaming was much better. I've had um, you know people of every sexuality. Um, I've had multiple um, transgendered employees on my team. Like even in conservative areas that I've lived in, where I wasn't comfortable being out. Like in public, um, but it was really nice to see. Um, uh, but you know, sometimes I guess my game uh, coming out is also not entirely positive. Um, basically, um, when I started, my team knew and they had known, and they were completely fine with it. As I said, we had transgender employees, and um, I, the, the whole gamut. Um, my boss has rainbow-colored hair, so. <laughs> was a pretty safe bet when I interviewed with him. I'm like, I think he will probably not have a problem with, uh, with my coming out. Um, but actually, the, uh, the company itself did not want us to do an It Gets Better project, um, which a number of us have tried to propose. And so that's sort of making me wonder, you know, does the company have everyone's best interest in mind if they won't you know, make a statement? And, um, no worries. Yeah, well, to, I, I can I can move forward on that. As far as making statements, uh, about a half hour before this panel started, and I have not posted anything about myself on my Facebook wall before. And keep in mind, I have a, a large network of industry professionals on my Facebook page, friends from a lot of the companies here, and and more presidents and. Developers like uh, okay, let me go back to Command and Conquer. Anybody a Command and Conquer fan? Anybody know the audio director uh, at Westwood, Frank Lepaki? Awesome music, right? Yeah, I used to work with him for five years. He didn't know I was gay. 
In fact, I never told anybody for five years at Petroglyph that I was gay. And so what I did this morning is, or a half hour ago, is I posted on a wall, hey, I'm at GamerX, and uh, I am celebrating my birthday weekend. This is my birthday on Sunday. Don't ask how old I am. Thanks. And uh, by the way, I'm moderating the coming out panel. And I said a couple other quick things about, you know, I want, I, I hope that there's the support from my friends on Facebook for this, and uh, that I would check back at the end of the panel, which we're getting close to. We want to do a little Q and A with you guys too, if you have any questions, of course. Um, so I was going to actually check here to see uh, if anybody said anything. If you guys are. Uh, are uh, interested in, in seeing a live, so to speak, uh, <laughs> update. Here, let me do it on this. Okay, let's, uh, while I get the Facebook post up, let's do a little Q&A, shall we? Oh, also, um, before I forget, some of you may not know this, but there are Facebook groups out there. Uh, there's one specifically that I would like to see all of you join. It's uh, GGP. Um, it, um, what does that stand for? Gay Gaming Professionals. <laughs> Just do a search on Facebook, you'll find it. Um, it's a great group to discuss GamerX uh, and anything else related. So if there's any, do we have mics, by the way, uh, for the audience to uh, ask questions? Or unless somebody's really loud, we can just ask. Okay, that's fine. Right. Well, yeah, go ahead and start. We can start with you, and then while I'm doing this, you guys can sure, help me. That's fine. I just, I noticed that you guys, since we have uh, two community managers, I thought this might be a perfect question, but I, I'm getting a sense that the, that the community in the industry itself is actually quite different than the community of gamers in general. Because, you know, gamers have stereotypically a, a very bad reputation for being, you know, misogynistic, bigoted, and oftentimes, you know, just try to shock because they think it's funny. Um, but but a lot of things I've heard about the industry have been very positive. And I was wondering, as a question to you guys, like, do you have to, I mean, do you, do you find yourself like acting differently with people in the industry as opposed to people that you know you have to manage in the community? Like, is there is there any sort of kind of wall between that or or different kind of interaction? Um, for me personally, no. Um, my sexual orientation really doesn't come up when I'm at an exhibitor booth demoing the game or talking to players on the forums. Um, there are times when um, being bisexual may uh, help me inform or help me moderate a discussion because we do have gay characters, bisexual characters in our game and people do talk about that and they often get into very heated discussions about that. Um, I don't I don't really I don't censor myself but um, I don't I don't think there's a wall. It's I'm just I'm there to mediate a discussion and I'm gonna shut down any people who are being homophobic or try to if I think they're salvageable, try to guide them into uh, a respectful discussion where they can disagree respectfully, hopefully, or they can get out. Um, so for me, no, uh, is the short answer. Technical difficulties. Anybody else? I actually have a question for you. Sorry, I forgot what your name was. The one Math, Matthew. No, no. Oh. Regina? Regina, sorry, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I, when I, when I, um, the idea of coming out uh, for the most part was never whether or not someone would accept me for being gay or straight, but in the question of bisexuality, then accepting bisexuality as being an actual existing thing. And yeah. When, 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 with you being married, do people still question that it's even possible for you to be high that doesn't exist and you just say that even later. To be honest, um, I don't actually have a lot of discussions with people about um, my sexual orientation. Um, usually, um, usually I'll just comment about bi invisibility or bi erasure if it, um, if it comes up. Um, I don't know, people don't really confront me about, hey, you're married to a woman. Are you really bisexual? Like, really? Are you? Like, they don't. They don't ask me that. Like, I. I hope that they accept it as who I am. And if they have questions, sure, they can ask questions. But um, I'd say that it's it, in 
the gay community, it's difficult for me to, um, I don't know, identify with uh, with um, a lot of the initiatives, like gay pride parades and stuff is, are always very, um, I always had conflicted feelings about it because of the whole, like, not being in one or the other community. Like, I don't know if that helps, I don't know. Sorry. So I can try to, because I was married. Okay. And, <laughs> and, and I wasn't, like, fake married. I mean, you know, I enjoyed sex with women. And so I get asked that question a lot. And, you know, um, and I equate it to, um, the fact of me being now with a man is because of the emotional part. Like I need the relationship and the affection from a man than I do from a woman. And that makes me 52% gay, right? <laughs> and, 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 and it brings, brings to a point that um, uh, in the gay world, that's not good. Like I have a lot of gay friends who are like, no, there's no, that's yucky. You were with a woman, yuck, I will not. And I think we are all, I always look at everyone, we're all individuals and we have our own upbringings and our own personal experiences, right? We're not in a box, but we shouldn't be. And it goes back to my saying that about rules of what you should do and, you know, we're just human beings that are trying to be happy in our lives. And when you have friends that are saying, hey, you need to be this, or this is how you should come out, or that's not right, you know, Drop those friends. No, skip. You don't have to drop them. But um, it, it, it's very interesting. On um, the gay world, can even be even worse to you sometimes and your friends uh, about how you should come out and about bisexuality or uh, about anything, right? Um, but from my point of view, it's um, I think that everyone has their own experiences and they can be whoever the hell they want to be, right? Okay, I got the Facebook post up. Let me read it to you guys. So, I'm attending GamerX in San Francisco for my birthday weekend. It is a unique convention for the diverse minorities in the gaming community. I was going to say the diverse and growing, but I didn't want any confusion with anybody. I am moderating the community out in, coming out in the game industry panel. Took a bit of courage from fellow panelists, thank you panelists, for, uh, for doing this, but I'm up in front of the audience as I publish this post. Close. As part of our takeaway message as panelists, I want to show you guys and support from the support from my friends here on Facebook to show it is not an issue to recognize and express equality and that you do not change as a person just be from a personal preference. So I said thanks, and this was like 40 minutes ago. I have 33, 34 likes. Um, Gordon has a photo of me. <laughs> Garden. <laughs> um, some responses, rock on sir, uh, live a fearless life, your virtually family has, your virtual family is your back from Kate Edwards uh, from IGDA, and one person from uh, Petroglyph so far, I mentioned Petroglyph earlier, Steve Tall, which I did not expect this at all, plus one acceptance and support. And that's just the people who bothered to say something. So uh, I, I actually am, I'm, very close to tearing up here because I did. I honestly didn't realize that I, I was, you know, putting myself out there. It's the risk, you know, right? We all do that, and I, I am glad that I can show you guys that it, it's you do it on your own terms, but it, it can work out okay. So this is the start for me. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, I think we can. There's some other questions. Oh yeah. So I, I think Regina started talking about it a little bit. Like you guys are all diverse amongst yourselves, your identities, so on and so forth. Um, a euphemism for getting rid of people who are different is team fit, right? And regardless of what your diversity is, right? Like, will they fit in with the team? How do you professionally sort of navigate once you are recognizably diverse, whatever that is, as you want to communicate, right? As you want to come out, but also be employed as someone who fits in with the team. Does that make sense of the question? So can you, so. Like, yeah. you might be like, ah, you just said I'm 52% gay, that's fine, but what's that going to But But you're, so my, the, I think the question is like, um, because I'm gay, do I have a certain personality? Mm. 
because I'm gay, my, is my culture different? You know what I mean? I think, so when I look at it from a recruiting standpoint, yeah. and I look at it like hiring people, do they fit within the team? Are they collaborative? Do, are they an open communicator? Or are they someone that just you know wants to be in the corner and stuff like that? That's how we look at it. I don't, I don't see us going into our personal lives much when it comes to do they fit within the team. Does that make sense? It, it absolutely makes sense. So maybe just be maybe more specific. So in a process to join a team, you go through interviews. Right. And they're not supposed to, for the most part, ask you about your orientation or yeah. whatever, but you are supposed to communicate that you're going to fit. Right. Right. If you know you are discernibly different, what sort of recommendations do you have for how to communicate that fit? Does that make sense? I mean, speaking not from recruiting, but as somebody who's interviewed and hired a lot of people over the years, if I'm looking for a programmer, my concept of team fit is can they accomplish you know, the, the roles of this job? So just that part. And as far as the team fit, it's more of a personality. Like, in all the judgments I've made, in all my assessments have been, does it seem like this person is going to fit in, you know, just on a personality basis? Like if, if someone is interrupting me a lot in the interviews, that may not, you know, mesh well with some of the employers. And at least for me, I've never seen anyone hint that, you know, their reasons for saying no were because someone like had a list or, or, or anything like that. Um, I'm, I'm sure Thomas has probably seen more instances than I have, but I haven't personally in the industry ever seen uh, anyone say anything that, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure most companies would, would have a pretty low tolerance if you said, oh, I don't want to hire this guy because he, he seems gay. Well, I, I could say not on the, um, uh, the gay piece, more so on hiring women in games, um, that I've, I sit on a lot of debriefs, right? So I can pretty much control and uh, not control to say hire, no, <laughs> but more so control and ask the questions of like, why do you think that, right? We had a, um, a pretty senior level um, person come through and a lot of the directors, male directors were saying, yeah, she just didn't seem to, like she could push back and you know, and she didn't seem like, you know, she would tell me no, and you know, I don't know about this person. So that's when I dive into stuff, because then it's a stereotype of like, okay, so if, if she came in and actually interviewed and started pushing back during an interview, are you <laughs> shitting me? <laughs> I'm like, and so I'm like going through it and I'm like, all right, you tell me why you think that, right? And it does come out. It comes out that they're not knowing in the back of their head that they are doing this in the interview. They just assume like, oh, she's not gonna be able to push back. And I'm like, well, what does that equate in an interview? I'm like, it doesn't. Someone can be strong, a strong personality in an interview. Does that mean that they're gonna be able to push back? I was like, they're interviews. They're trying to be humble. They're trying to be to the point. They're trying to be, um, you know, very descriptive about their background. I was like, but. Yes, so I have seen stuff like that, and we've addressed it. Um, you know, I can't be in all the debriefs, but I try to make sure that uh, we are hiring for the job at hand. And uh, team fit, um, Horn, when you were talking about like if someone maybe even like looks different, right? They could totally look different, have green hair, and wear totally different things. It's weird for me because we have that. So if you are that, then you you do fit, right? So um, it's weird for us at ArenaNet because it's it truly does not come up, right? Um, we have all sorts of personalities that come through, and I'm happy that we really just focus on can they do the job, you know, at hand? Can they do the job? It doesn't matter what they dress, it doesn't matter how they look, it doesn't matter how many piercings they have or how many tattoos they have. Are they good at their job? So, um, I don't know if that helped out a little bit, but I, I can guarantee you that at other studios, and I've, I've heard about cultures at other studios, that would not be as, you know, it's more so kind of, all right, bro, we're gonna drink some beers and play some games tonight. Yeah, pound it out, right? Um, like, pound it out. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, it's, you know, and that's from my own experience, but um, I get what you're saying is that, you know, um, 
there will be, in other corporations, in other studios, there will be biases on how you dress, how you look, and everything, right? There's, there's always gonna be someone in that group that will pick something apart, right? And I just hope that a lot of these studios have someone like us, or someone, you know, you don't have to be gay to, to point these things out. You just have to be aware of it, right? And so, uh, I just hope that most of these studios have these practices, so. I think uh, our time is pretty much up. Uh, we, have, we have time for one more question. Got another question anywhere? OK. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending. I, I really appreciate it. Um, thanks. Thank the pounds, please.